What is going on guys and gals? Brooklyn Bound the Raid Scientist here and today I wanted to bring you a did you know guide for Vow of the Disciple tips. For those of you who have learned the raid but may want to know some more of the advanced mechanics or tips for the different encounters. This video is for people who understand the basic mechanics of the raid but may not know all the details. Some of the things I explain you may know already. That's great but hopefully you can at least take away one or two new learnings here. All right, so I'm gonna skip the intro encounter since you can respawn and essentially solo it if you really wanted to. So we're gonna move right on to acquisition. All right, first, did you know that every time you kill one of the chieftain glyph keepers in the rooms, it will reset the wipe timer on the obelisks? Remember that the wipe timer goes up if you let the shielded abated adherence do too much damage to them or if you take too long. But killing these glyph keepers will reset the timer back to zero. This is extremely helpful to know if you're doing something like the on my go triumph or even master level content as the timer can fill up a little faster. Secondly, did you know that when you kill the glyph keeper, also two unstoppable ogres will spawn near two of the obelisks randomly. However, if you don't kill any of those unstoppables before killing the next Glyph Keeper, then only one more will spawn at the last obelisk. At any given time, only a maximum of three unstoppables can be up. You cannot have multiple ogres at the same obelisk. So if you're very quick to kill the unstoppables as soon as they spawn, you essentially actually have to kill more. Thirdly, did you know that when it's time to input symbols, a quick way to tell if your obelisk has all three is to just shoot it anywhere. If it glows completely orange and not just the symbols, then yours is the wrong one. If it doesn't and just the symbol parts glow, then you have all three symbols at yours. Now this will cause it to reject your offering and give you one less attempt to input, but it can be a quick and easy way to figure out whose is up. In addition, remember that each of the three obelisks will only get a set of symbols that each shot once. So by process of elimination, as the encounter progresses, you'll know which obelisks are already completed. If you have any more advanced tips on acquisition, drop them in the comments below. Now, moving on to Caretaker. First, did you know that when a runner leaves the room with a symbol or symbols in their possession to input into the obelisk, this is what causes the Vandal Snipers or the Overload Hobgoblins and Master to spawn. Because if you are leaving the overloads up using stasis or just trying to keep them stunned, you know that once the nine symbols have an input, no more will spawn on the floor. Secondly, did you know that add waves in this encounter are generally tied to the obelisk inputs and the symbol collections? First off, Anytime you get a rejected offering by inputting the symbols incorrectly or taking too long, you get additional ad waves. So on top of having to go collect more symbols, you'll also have more ads to deal with. In addition, you can prevent ads as well in this encounter by always having the obelisk awaiting an offering. You see, when the obelisk is awaiting an offering, ads don't spawn. So if your runners are super fast, or if you even use the third runner on later floors, you can always have the obelisk awaiting an offering. Note that when you exit the symbol room, the obelisk will turn black and reset. And then you'll have roughly five seconds or so to input your symbols. So you can delay slightly as well, but don't take too long. Thirdly, did you know that the plates timer for damage phase doesn't start until the first person steps on it, meaning you can count down and jump on together. And for subsequent plates, don't be that overzealous person who runs ahead of everyone and jumps on first, because this is essentially cutting out DPS time from the five other people who weren't with you when you jumped on. Everybody should just jump on all three plates together. Fourthly, did you know that the number of honeycombs in the air those bug looking things that fly out of the caretaker become much more aggressive and seek you out if there are too many up. While I'm not sure on the actual number, I do know that if you leave too many of them up in the air without shooting them down, they will lock onto players and attack them much more aggressively. So you unfortunately have to keep them to a minimum each time they spawn, especially on master mode. And finally, did you know 
that the visual programming on the obelisk often glitches out, and it looks like there's no symbols for input. If this happens, just shoot as many of the spots as you can. This happens sometimes when the runners are very quick, and essentially the obelisk can't keep up with all the symbol collections and resets. The symbols really are there, you just can't see them. So if this happens, shoot everything, and you might just get lucky and have your offering accepted. It doesn't always work, but it can. Okay, moving on to exhibition. Did you know that all the ways the timer gets extended across the rooms is via the orange nut or seed? Most people know that killing the shielded taken knights obviously extends the timer, but in the checkpoint rooms, Placing the seed into the pedestals is what resets the timer and starts the next room. So you can deposit the Vault of Glass Relic Shield or the Taken Blight and they can sit there as long as you have time left. The timer doesn't restart in the next room until the orange nut is deposited. This is very helpful in low man attempts because you essentially run out the 30 second timer given to you from dropping a relic which doesn't allow you to pick up another one. Also, if you struggle with this encounter, knowing this allows you to breathe a little after each room. Because if you have, say, 40 seconds left, you can talk strategy, wait on a super, or go back and grab some ammo if needed before putting it in and starting the next room. Secondly, did you know that it's a common misconception that the Glyph Keeper spawns in the rooms are triggered by the killing those hobgoblins only? The Glyph Keeper spawns are triggered by killing enough adds of any kind. It just so happens that the taken hobgoblins are worth more in the total adds killed tally, so it seems like that's what triggers it. Either way, it's important to know that you have to kill adds and a lot of them to get the glyph keepers to spawn. They are not on a timer. Thirdly, did you know that the symbol callouts from the glyph keepers don't despawn? So if your team is struggling and you can't remember callouts, just kill everything, push forward quickly, and then once you reset the second timer by killing the second shielded knight, just double back and do the callouts without anything shooting you. It may seem slower, but it can minimize missed callouts if you keep forgetting them. Fourthly, and I hope this eventually gets fixed, but did you know that if you are too fast with the Taken Blight Relic and remove it before the adds in that section spawn in, it can cause the Taken Blight to respawn again. So if you see this happen, you'll know why. And finally, most people know this, but some newer folks might not. That, did you know the Taken Blight locations in the final two rooms are randomly assigned and are not always the same? They rotate between one or two different locations or patterns. Therefore, it's best to have someone who knows the options and locations run this relic to maximize the efficiency. Now finally, on to the Rulk encounter. There really isn't a lot of hidden mechanics or tricks on this one, honestly, but I do have a few details newer folks may not know. First, did you know that every time you dunk two emanating buffs into the appropriate pillars, a yellow bar abomination spawns? and the Rulk orange bubble around him that allows you to not get near him gets a little smaller. Secondly, did you know that after dunking an emanating buff, you have five seconds to possibly dunk a second one, AKA do the double dunk strat, before the symbols on the six pillars change. Keep this in mind that there is a timer after dunking that causes the symbols to change. Thirdly, did you know that getting hit by Rolk's light beam attack gives you stacks of pervading darkness? And the longer you stay in it, the more stacks you can get, and the more damage you take. Therefore, you need to be careful if you aren't doing the buffs, and especially during DPS phase to not get hit by this. Because when he goes into his final stand, if you already have stacks of darkness, it could kill you much faster. On the flip side of this, there is a raid mod you can get called Umbral Sharpening that increases your damage based on the number of stacks of pervading darkness. Keep in mind though, this mod does currently not stack with things like Weapons of Light or the weapon buff you get from a Well of Radiance. Fourthly, did you know that every time his glaive is shot in the second phase, 
that the glaive has a specific callout location associated with it. This is very important to know because if you shoot the glaive and get the leeching and then die with it, and someone else shoots the next glaive to get leeching in your place, the new person will have a new callout, not necessarily the one you had. The callout per glaive will pop up at the spot the glaive was, so pay close attention because it doesn't stay up for too long before fading. And there you go. My did you know tips and tricks for Vow of the Disciple? If you have anything else that I missed or you might know about, drop it in the comments. I'd love to see it added. And uh, I appreciate you all listening to the video. Best of luck in getting the raid done and any triumphs or challenges you're trying to achieve. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time, Guardians. Thank you.